What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and I've gotten a lot of requests to talk about this subject, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to go about it. And I think I've, I've come up with a, a method here that would be understandable for people that are maybe newer to computers, but still enough information for those power users to kind of know what to tweak and what to look for on the subject matter of today's video. So if you guys follow like Tom's Hardware or um, PC Mag and a lot of different obvious uh, vendors, if you will, sources of news for computers, you might have seen over the last week this discussion taking place about motherboards potentially damaging and or reducing the lifespan of your Ryzen CPU because of some potentially unscrupulous acts that are taking place. So I wanna kind of address this. I wanna talk about some of the settings and kind of show you guys something that we've known about, not just with AMD, but with Intel as well, specifically with the way the board manufacturers set up their BIOS. So let's go and talk about this today. Let's put some fears to rest, if you will. And for those that are super concerned, how to undo some of these things that are probably on that you don't even know about. NZXT's BLD is the simplest way to get a gaming PC customized the way you want it. Choose from the games you want to play and set a budget and let BLD take care of the rest. The starter, streaming, and creator PCs take the guesswork out of finding a PC that meets your budget and gaming needs are now available with Intel's 10th Gen Core processors. And with a 48-hour turnaround backed by NZXT's two-year all-in-one warranty and same-day shipping with Blitz Mode, you can start enjoying your new PC right away. To see what NZXT's BLD can do for you, click the sponsored link in the description below. Okay, so for our test bench here for the sake of today's video, we have a, well, pretty much the highest end desktop uh, mainstream Ryzen system that you can go with. It's a 3950X. It's sitting on an Asus Crosshair Formula motherboard, which is the their like top of the line motherboard for the AMD um, AM4 chipset or AM4 socket type, I should say, with the X570 chipset. Uh, we got a pair of eight gigabyte DIMMs of Corsair Vengeance memory. They're not even set to XMP or anything yet. And a 2080 uh, RTX card sitting on the top, which has nothing to do with today's video. Now, I also am using the Be Quiet uh, Slim. It's a Dark Rock Slim uh, cooler on there because I didn't want to go with anything that was like overkill in terms of like big major cooling. I just wanted something that would consider a little bit more indicative of what someone might actually use out there on their systems. Also too, you might hear a lot of noise. Our alley is very busy today. They're painting, they're cleaning, there's truck deliveries. We got work to do, so we just gotta get through it. You probably won't even hear it, but I will. So I'll probably seem like a crazy person if I start yelling at sounds you don't hear. <laughs> Phil doesn't hear them either. I'm just crazy. <laughs> now I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video to the Tom's Hardware article who also links the original sources of these, these news, um, the news is that have broken. Anyway, but on a very high level, probably a offensively layman level to those people that understand the problem. Now to understand the way the CPU gets you the up to numbers that you see reported on the box, um, there's a few things that have to be within tolerance, if you will. It's just like an engine, right? How's an engine run? Well, an old engine without all the stupid sensors and stuff, which actually really play into today's topic. An old school engine just needs fuel, it needs compression and it needs spark. And I know some people are like, but Jay, it needs air. That's fuel. The animation between gas and air, that's your fuel. Anyway, I know people, that probably triggered some engine guys, but whatever, we'll move on. Um, when it comes to the CPU, there's a power limit, which is how much total power can it pull? That's VRMs de determined, and your motherboard's gonna de determine that based on its design as well, not just the CPU. So if your motherboard is like a small ITX, not very powerful board, then it's probably not gonna even clock as far as the same CPU in a more beefy board like we have here with the Crosshair. Um, there's obviously a temperature limit. There's an upper threshold of how hot it can get. And then there's going to be, well, there's more, but we'll keep it simple like that. Now with the way the computer or the CPU communicates with the motherboard is it basically says, hey, how are we doing? And then command center and the motherboard's like, hey, we're doing pretty good. Let's go ahead and go for that 4.0. Uh, we got, you know, blah, 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 power left. Yeah, let's go for it. So let's go ahead and give a little bit more volts to ramp up the, the speeds. And that's why you see that crap fluctuating all the time. It's not just locked unless you go into the BIOS and set it to be static. That's why you see the voltage go up and down and up and down and the temps go up and down and everything moves around the frequencies and all that because it's just like a modern computer controlling your engine. Timing and all that stuff is constantly being adjusted based on the load. The same thing happens with your CPUs. Now the articles, are basically saying it was recently discovered and AMD is still investigating this and their investigation means they've got to really go to the board manufacturers and be like, hey, what the hell's going on here? 
It's claiming that the motherboard is reporting back false numbers to the CPU to force it to go farther. And reporting back false numbers saying, hey, our power limit is lower than it really is, means it's gonna push more voltage. More voltage and more heat means lower lifespan when it comes to the overall longevity of your CPU. Now I'm gonna start, before I show you anything right here, letting you know the voltages that we're talking about here and the potential lifespan reduction is probably negligible. Now, AMD has had no communication with me prior to making this video. In fact, I'm sure they wish I had reached out to them before making this video, but this is not about blame. It's not about, oh my God, your CPU is gonna die. Oh, we wanna do all the drama and get all the stupid clicks. It's not about that. My goal of today's video is for people that are sitting on Ryzen and are worried about their CPU dying tomorrow to kind of put it to rest that it's not gonna happen. Let's say the CPU was gonna survive 15 years under normal usage, but under these scenarios, it's now gonna last 12 that's really not gonna affect you that much, is it? In fact, under normal use case, when you're just loading it out of the box, if they were running under the stock perimeters, we're gonna, we're gonna, that's gonna be the next part of the video. Uh, if you just plug it in and turn it on and go, you're probably never gonna notice any sort of degradation. What you would probably notice is if you were pushing the overclocks on this thing, and then in a year or two from now, you start noticing it's losing stability, and you're having to push more voltage or just will no longer run at that frequency. I'm sure people out there watching this video have no wondered why your CPU, not just Ryzen, but any CPU is suddenly not holding the overclocks it used to. Well, welcome to degradation. That's what you do with overclocks. But you didn't kill it, you just reduced the silicon quality, which means you're not gonna be getting as much uh, overhead as you had before. So when it comes to the motherboard manufacturers though, we have had lots of complaints. And yes, I have an Asus board sitting right here, but this video is not about Asus. We're just showing you this instance of Asus being one of the overclocking brands that really has a lot of bells and whistles and knobs that you can turn. Some of them are on by default, and that's what we kind of want to show you. Um, we complained about this with the 9000 series. In fact, my channel was one of those that got duped by it, where our 9900K results were much higher than other people were, were noticing on their charts because of the fact that it was automatically applying the turbo clock to all core and not by, by core usage, which is what it should have been out of the box. So with that said, Let's kind of run some back-to-back -back tests here. Let's show you what it looks like out of the box, what knobs you should look for in your motherboard BIOS if you're concerned until this is officially addressed and or either debunked or fixed. Now, I know one of the first things that freaked a lot of people out when the 3000 series Ryzen launched, myself included, is the voltage out of the box. And you can see we're at 3.5 megahertz, or 3.5 gigahertz, <laughs> 3.5 megahertz. Man, we're going back to like 1991. Anyway, <laughs> so when it comes to the voltage out of the box, it's really high. It's, it's scary high. Um, but if you understand the way Ryzen works, as soon as it goes under load, it drops down to about 1.275. But if you hit F5, at least in a ASUS BIOS, F5 will reload the optimized defaults. Um, so you can see everything is set to auto, 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 auto. Now there's like a few things right here, right on the very first extreme tweaker page. And that doesn't constitute San Bernardino. That's just the whatever. This is where you'll find a lot of the settings that are questionable, if you will. And there's like three different ones on here that can actually affect performance and turbo clock and all that. You've got AI overclock or overclock tuner set to default by default, right? So there's default and there's auto, which might already throw some people off. Um, just to make sure that's, yeah, default is where it was. So I'm hitting F5 to reload out of the box settings, by the way. Um, performance enhancer, that's basically where it's gonna try and do an automatic overclock. Uh, memory frequency, F clock frequency, that's the fabric clock for the memory, and then core performance boost, it's all set to auto. Um, DOCP, that's basically XMP for AMD, and they just call it DOCP. We're leaving everything, what it is, out of the box because we want to start playing with those settings and see what happens. Now, there's technically two different defaults at, at play here. There's AMD default, which is where I already explained how AMD, uh, it's in the microcode what the CPU will do and what it's looking for and how it achieves it. And then the motherboard has its defaults where it basically will tell the CPU, no, you're going to do it this way. Now, the motherboard will win. The motherboard will win when it comes to the attempt. The CPU has fail safes involved that will say, hey, this didn't work, we're gonna save ourselves, and then basically that's where you deal with like just straight up shutdown. And that's how, it, that's how it saves itself, is it just shuts down if things go too far. Now I'm using hardware monitor to keep an eye on voltages, right? I just wanna see something, we're looking for change. I know there's gonna be comments and arguments taking place in the comments right now, you're typing this without actually listening to what I'm saying. You're typing how I need to be using Ryzen Master and not hardware monitor, because the hardware monitor is wrong. 
All I'm using this for right now is to be able to keep an eye on some of the voltages being reported back. Software voltages too are always an approximation. And then I want to see what our actual clock speed is going up to, which is perfectly visible right here in Hardware Monitor. I don't want Ryzen Master and the BIOS to be conflicting with each other. Ryzen Master should load whatever the BIOS is telling it, but Ryzen Master also has buttons and, and knobs in there that can conflict. So we're letting the motherboard handle everything, not software. All the software does anyway is tell the BIOS which knobs to turn. So we're keeping this as simple as possible. If anyone sees anyone comment down below about how you need to use Ryzen Master, just timestamp them this and reply. Remember how I was explaining earlier how things are constantly moving all around just like your timing in a modern engine because of all the different perimeters and things taking place? Well, look at the voltages here. VID, that's the, that's the actual voltage being sent to the core itself. Look at the CPU frequency. It's bouncing all around, three gigs, three, 4.7, blah, blah, blah. And you can see our max cores went to 4.715 uh, and that's because we're up to 4.7 on a single core. It says we're pulling about 17 to 15 watts at idle. So we're gonna keep an eye on that number as well. Yes, I know software wattage reporting is again an approximation, but it's something to go off of than just going blind. All right, so enough talk, let's just run, see what our scores are. I wanna see what the all core clock is gonna go to. Uh, it looks like four, just under 4.1, 4092, 4067. And that's pretty normal. We saw a lot of people report that about four gigahertz is 4.1 is where we were seeing it go. Our core voltage dropped down to 1.26 ish. You can see it went as high as 1.5 when it's on idle. And that's what freaked a lot of people out is that 1.5, myself included. But you can see when it goes under load, it drops down. Uh, 9255 is our score with everything set to just the way it comes out of the box. So, so far, nothing seems weird in that the voltage it didn't go too high under load. Our frequency went exactly where we expected it to, about 4.0 to 4.1, which is what people are saying. And the thing we find really freak, uh, frustrating about AMD is unlike Intel, where you can go to the ARC and see the chart that shows exactly how many cores, what should boost to, et cetera, based on the how many cores, that information exists for AMD, but man, is it buried and hard to find. Intel just puts it out there, and I think AMD could learn something from Intel, at least on their arc and if they had something similar um, i don't care about stupid gaming graphics on your website in the way you make it look when i click on the cpu give me data please anyway and i don't mean star trek tng <laughs> uh, but in terms of temperatures here our cpu temperature look at that we hit 81. okay we're on a be quiet uh dark rock slim probably should have a bigger cpu cooler on here for a 16 core 32 thread processor however as you saw we'll run this again i want to see in real time what the temps do this is our our socket temp 75 now 95 is where it will throttle so you can see we're still saying we're still saying a solid 14 c from our max temp so so far out of the box nothing seems too weird we're pulling about 127 watts at least it was what that's reporting Let's now go into the BIOS and start turning some button knobs. Dials, that's what they are, dials. <laughs> so let's do this, overclock tuner. Let's set that to auto. That's all I'm gonna change, auto. What is that gonna do for us? Look, it's going slightly over 4.1 now, like 4.124, and then they drop down to 4.1. So for a minute, it tried it, and 40, or 93.30. So we gained about 50 points or so. Um, well, no, 42 points. And now it's just by switching it from default to auto on the AI overclocker. Now there's still more buttons here. Um, and the reason why I'm showing you guys this is some of these buttons that I'm playing with right now were on by default, where it's not, we're now gonna force it to uh, do core enhancement, which is gonna probably bring it up to probably four two, maybe even four three all core. And these are some of the things that I believe uh, were to be necessary in terms of getting bigger numbers out of it when you turn on these particular features is where you start getting into the potentially damaging area of false reporting of power draw, power limit, temperature, not temperature, but uh, amps and all that sort of stuff and current, which is where I think a lot of the concerns are about whether or not you would be damaging your CPU. We're gonna turn on core performance boost enabled. And we're gonna leave the core ratio default and then I'm also going to turn on the faster memory so we're turning on 3000 megahertz it was sitting at 2133 before all right so for our last test here we still are set to automatic we are not turning any of the knobs ourselves in terms of what it will boost up to we are now letting the motherboard decide for the CPU how far it should go the only thing the only say the CPU has is no 
<laughs> that's it. It can say no. I don't think it will because it's being lied to. Well, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> 86 C on the temp. So we are now what, 8 C from uh, 5 C from max 3 C from throttling. So let's see what the core frequency goes up to. 425. Oh, and then drop down to 41 immediately. Probably because the temps are already. No, it dropped down to 4074. <laughs> 255 C, let's go! Then let's, this motherboard will allow it to go to 255 C before it shuts down. I'm not gonna let this run right now. I need to keep the CPU working. Now, look, the CPU will allow itself to protect itself unless you turn off the feature. Yeah. And I'm gonna manually pump the voltage to like one point. Now we'll do 1.5. It's last line of defense actually is gonna be temperature because even if you're lying about the amps being drawn, if you're lying about the current and you're lying about all this other stuff, as long as you don't turn off the thermal protection, which this board will kind of let you do with, it makes sense, it's an extreme overclocking board. It wants to let you push the limit. But when it comes to power draw and all that sort of stuff, it manifests itself in heat. And if the CPU gets too hot, it will turn itself off. It will at least thermal throttle itself. If thermal throttling doesn't work and then the power draw gets too high and it notices like, okay, we're continuing to draw too much power, it will then shut itself down. All right, here we go. You ready? What is gonna happen to the temperatures? It's idling at 56C. And there you go. <laughs> it immediately restarted itself. So important to note, that wasn't a crash. That wasn't a crash. That was a thermal protected restart. Now the point of today's video was not, let's make sure it turns back on. <laughs> the point of today's video is, is, was not to debunk the article. It was not to say who was right and who was wrong. I was talking specifically to... <laughs> anyway, the point of today's video was not to debunk the article or prove it right or say AMD's wrong or the board manufacturers are wrong. It was to try and put at ease anyone's mind that read the article and the amount of people that were tweeting me, it's all over Reddit. Every community, I don't care if it's cars or PC or painting, loves drama. Drama drives attention. And man, people will pick up on the drama and they will just spread it without doing any sort of research on it. And all I wanted to show you in today's video is that you are not going to kill your CPU because of whatever discussion is taking place right now. Your CPU will protect itself. I just demonstrated that. It still works. Just keep your ear to the ground. Pay attention to your manufacturer's website for the motherboard. They probably will have some sort of a BIOS update, even if it's disproven, like this is not a problem. I'm almost positive these motherboard manufacturers will come out with some sort of a BIOS update addressing this, maybe even as a placebo. But regardless, at the end of the day, your stuff is fine. Even when you try and break it like I'm doing right now. See, it's fine. It's fine. No, AMD did not pay me to make this video. I don't care. I don't care if it, hey, if AMD really did have a problem on their hands right here that's killing people's CPUs and stuff, don't you think I would have like a hell of a clickbait video to make? But I don't think that's the case. If you're worried about it, go in there and change everything to defaults. By hitting F5 like I did, at least there's no way with the type of voltages we're talking about in these articles, are you truly going to kill your CPU? You might shave an extra game of Fortnite off of it. Deep dive type things have brought a restart to this video. <laughs> 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 <laughs>